Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Fantastic Friday. We have made it to the end of the week and we're just so delighted and humbled and privileged to be able to come into your hearts and come into your homes once again. Amen. Good morning, everybody. God is simply amazing. We appreciate him for everything that he has done and is doing in our lives. Amen. Good morning, Buki. Good morning, my St. Paul family. Good morning, everybody. Who all do we have on? Have a host of people that are connected with us. Lois and Annie Redmond, Tammy and Tony and Era. Good morning, Justin. Going to get with you this morning, Justin. Um, Johnny Davis, Valerie, Cousin Jackie, Lois. Amen. Uh, Sister Sheila and others that are connected with us as well. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Hopefully everybody is doing well. And um, I pray that your night was blessed and, and that you are now refreshed to go about this day and conquer it in Jesus' name. Amen. Awesome, guys. Look, let us go ahead and get this day kicked off. Um, I want to maximize the time that we have together this morning. I believe that God has certainly something to say concerning uh, concerning our plight, concerning everything that we're going through. Amen. And I'm just grateful this morning. Father God, we thank you so much. This is the day that you made and created for us. You've given us a newfound uh, stamina to move forward, Lord God. We appreciate you for your hand and support our lives. We know that we could not be able to topple over everything that we have before us. If we know, Lord God, that if we don't have you in our lives, I'm praying right now that you continue to keep us, hold us, gird us up and lead us, Lord God, into the places that you would have us to be. Asking right now that you forgive us for all of our shortcomings and our sins. Cleanse us from everything, Lord God, that is unholy, any unwholesome thoughts, any unwholesome ways. Lord God, I'm praying right now that you forgive us right now because we recognize that we have not yet arrived in every, in every area of our lives and our spiritual walk. That's why we're asking daily, Lord God, that you just continue, Lord God, to help us to mature to the things that you would have us to be, Lord God. We thank you right now for everybody that is connected and everybody that will be watching replay. I'm praying, oh God, that this devotion will continue to help us, Lord God, to grow deeper in you, grow deeper in your word, Lord God, grow deeper in our spirituality. And I'm praying right now that you will help us, Lord God, to exhibit all the fruit of the Spirit, every day of our lives, every waking moment of our lives, Lord God, love, joy, peace, kindness, gentleness, self-control, Lord God, that we would continue, Lord God, to be all that you've called and created us to be on this blessed day. We want to always remember um, those, Lord God, that are going through um, going through a sickness, Lord God. They're battling um, COVID right now. And we're praying right now that you continue to bless them in Jesus' name as well. And God, we thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray and ask it all. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Anybody grateful this morning? Anybody grateful this morning? I don't know about you, but I am definitely grateful this morning. Let's get some worship on this morning as we magnify our God on this blessed, fantastic Friday morning. Hallelujah. Sharing it on my page right now. Hallelujah. Let's worship him. Let's worship him. Anybody grateful? I'm grateful. Yes, I am. Hey, I'm grateful. Thank you, Lord. Mm. I am grateful for the things that you have done yes i'm grateful for the victories we won i could go on and on and on about your word because I'm grateful, grateful, so grateful just to praise you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Flowing from my heart are the issues of my heart. Gratefulness. Anybody grateful this morning that God has blessed you to see the end of the week? 
Anybody grateful this morning that God has given you your health and your strength? Anybody grateful this morning? Come on, give God some praise on this fantastic Friday. I am grateful for the things that you have done. Yes, I'm grateful for the victories we won. I could go on and on and on about your words because I'm grateful, grateful, so grateful just to praise you, Lord. Anybody grateful just to be able to praise his holy name? Anybody have anything flowing out of your heart? It ought to be some gratefulness this morning. I know that we have other things that are trying to flow. I know that we have worry and doubt and we have other things that's trying to flow out. But I am praying this morning, oh hallelujah, that we have some gratefulness flowing out of our hearts. Oh hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise right there. Oh hallelujah. This is your moment. This is your time to praise God for the breakthroughs in your life. This is your opportunity right now to go ahead and praise God. Even though you don't have the victory right now, you need to praise him like you've already got it. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's worship him this morning. He is so worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. That's it. Go ahead and praise him. Go ahead and praise him for the answer that's on the way. Go ahead and praise him right now for your health coming back. Go ahead and praise him right now for that business venture jumping off. Go ahead and praise him right now for opportunities and doors swinging open on your behalf. Go ahead and praise him right now. Hallelujah. Hey, I feel him this morning. He's so worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Amen. He's worthy to be praised. Oh, hallelujah. Let me stop right here and get into this word this morning. Amen. Amen. The worship is just a precursor for the word as we get into it this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. So worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Amen. This is your breakthrough moment right now. I believe it for you, Lois. I believe it for you, Janetta, Church Girl Wright and Melanie, Minister Betty and Buki, Minister Stewart. I believe this is your breakthrough moment, Justin. I believe it right now. Amen. If you don't shout out, shout for you. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hey. <laughs> Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. How we bless the Lord. All right, guys, look, let's get into this word. Let's get into this word as we get ready to make a transition this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Now we're getting ready to go to war. We had some worship. Now we're getting ready to go to war. <laughs> Amen. The devil does not like when we go to war. Amen. Because we know that we, we have some firepower. We have the power of the Holy Ghost on our side. All right, guys. And look, I forgot to give you guys my introduction. For those of you that uh, this is your first, very first time connecting with us, Look, my name, of course, is Pastor Thurman Cunningham, Jr., Senior Pastor of the St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church of Comita, Mississippi. Amen. After this pandemic, um, hopefully one day resides, I pray um, that we all be able to get together and connect in fellowship. Amen. Come on down to Comita, Mississippi. Amen. All right, guys, let's get into this word. Psalms 21, we're jumping at verse number six. Psalms 21, verse six, it says, you have endowed him. Still talking about David. And David is still talking in the third person. You have endowed him with eternal blessings and given him the joy of your presence. Seven says, for the king trusts in the Lord, the unfailing love of the most high will keep him from stumbling. So good. Uh, verse eight says, you will capture all your enemies. Your strong right hand will seize all who hate you. Verse nine says, you will throw them in a flaming furnace when you appear. The Lord will consume them in his anger. Fire will devour them. Amen. Amen. So just for a few moments of your time, my brothers and sisters, 
I want to talk about, won't he do it? <laughs> won't he do it? Somebody need to scream, yes, he will. God will do it. Oh, hallelujah. Won't he do it? God will do it. I'm just so blessed this morning, my friends. I am just so blessed. Let's get into these scriptures this morning. All right. So this is a continuation of what we talked about yesterday, of course. Uh, we believe that God has already given us the victory. He's given uh, David is, of course, speaking in the third person. Right. God blessed him to make it through the battle, make it through the war. And my question right now, before we move in forward, uh, move forward. Is anybody blessed right now? Is anybody did anybody win a war yesterday? Did anybody win a war this morning? Maybe perhaps your war was just getting up. <laughs> Amen. And, and pulling the covers from over your head. Uh, you know you need to get into this word. You know you need to get into this devotion. You know you need to spend time in the word. And you were just so tired this morning, so fatigued. But guess what? Your war, you won your war this morning. You got up and you hit the button and you connected with us this morning. Amen. David is saying, I am, look, I'm so grateful that you have God. You blessed me to win the war and you have endowed him. Talking about himself. You've endowed me with eternal blessings and given me the joy of your presence. Look, I'm telling you, there's a lot of things that I, that I desire to have in this life. Amen. I know that I firmly have already got my, got my ticket to go to heaven. Amen. Romans 10 and 9 said, if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. I did that, guys, at the tender age of eight years old. I've given Christ my life, and I know that many of you guys have done the exact same thing. Look, our ticket is in our hand, and we're ready to go, right? But God has some blessings on this side as well. Do I have a, one witness right there? God has some blessings on this side, but we've got to be in alignment, <clears throat> excuse me, with his word and with his will, right? We've got to be firmly connected to him. God is sitting back with a slingshot, just ready, my God, to release some blessings to somebody this morning. He is ready to release them. And David is saying, God, you have endowed me with eternal blessings. And I thank you for those eternal blessings. And God, you know what? I love everything that you've given me from a materialistic standpoint. I love the fact that you're opening up brand new opportunities and brand new doors. I enjoy that uh, to the fullest. But God, you know what? There is something that I desire and thank you for, for even more than the kingdoms that I have. Thank you, Lord God, for, for even the things that I have uh, from a physical standpoint. But God, the thing that I love and thank you the most on this fantastic Friday, watch this. The, the, the latter part says you've given me the joy of your presence. My God, look, if I don't have anything else, God, I am content with just being connected with you. I am content with being in your presence. And I think that somebody ought to shout right there that you thank God, yes, for the presence, as I said one other time before, the gifts, the things that have the bows, the pretty big red ribbons on, on those things. But you ought to thank God for his presence being in your life. Because if you get his presence, you'll get all of the other things. I just thank God this morning for God's presence because his presence in my life illuminates the darkness. His presence in my life helps me to move forward. The presence, his presence in my life help me when other folk that when other folk don't want to help me. His presence. That's what we ought to thank God for. We ought to thank God for his presence. That's what David is saying. I thank you, Lord God, for yes, your eternal blessings. And I thank you, Lord God, for even more of your of your presence in my life. Amen. Look, when we have God presence, it helps us to be bold. When we have God presence, it helps us to stand up against our enemies. When we have God's presence, it helps us to go ahead and fill out the application for that job. When we have God's presence, it helps us to go ahead and make that decision to go ahead and move forward and jump into that brand new business venture. When we have God's presence, we know that we can make it in our families and be the husbands and wives that God has called us to be. When we have God's presence, can I teach this morning and halfway preach? I mean, when we got God's presence, we can maneuver and do everything that God has called us to do. When we got God's presence, we can um, we can call those things, though they be not as if they already are operating. Oh, God, speak, Lord. That's why I'm so happy and, uh, and elated this morning that David is saying, God, I thank you for giving me the victory over the war that I just came out of. I'm so grateful this morning that you have endowed me. Mm, you have imputed eternal blessings over my life. I don't deserve it, David is saying. Watch this. David is a man that is that is not without fault. He's not, he's not a man that does not have some errors in his life. But David is one that said, you know what? I've learned my lesson. 
Oh my God. Any Anybody learned that lesson this morning from your past faults and your past sins and your past letdowns from your past bad decision? Anybody grateful this morning that you are now in God's presence and he has endowed you with eternal blessings? Hey, Amen. I felt that. I felt that this morning. Hallelujah. God, and my question is, my question is, won't he do it? Hey, he will do it. My God, he will do it. Let's move on. I can stay there all day long. Watch this. David saying, for the king, trust in the Lord. <laughs> the unfailing love of the most high will keep him from stumbling. David again is talking about himself in the third person as he is writing these beautiful lyrics. He's a gifted lyricist, guys. He says, for I, the king, trust in you, Lord. I trust in you. I trust in you before I went to battle. I trust in you while I was in the battle. I'm going to trust in you, Lord God, when the next battle tries to come up, and in inevitably it will. I trust in you for the king. Trust in you, God. My question to you, Justin, do you trust in him, brother? Do you trust in him? Hey, man, Lois, and by the way, God did give me confirmation, my friend. Go ahead and move on. <laughs> amen, amen, hallelujah. Katrina and Dorothy, amen, and Minnie Murdoch, do you trust in the Lord? Can I tell you what the word of, God, word of the Lord says in Proverbs? Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, absolutely every one of them, all your ways, if you acknowledge him, God, here it is. This is how you do it. God, look, I'm getting ready to make this decision. I need your help. I need your grace. And then watch this. You not only, you not only make that decision on your own, but the Bible says that there's, um, there's wisdom in the multitude of counsels, that you've asked wisdom from somebody else, from a pastor, from a, from a friend, from somebody that is really deeply rooted in God, right? <laughs> you've, asked for, you've asked counsel from somebody else, right? Because so many times, and look, I'm going here. There's so many times that we decide to do things on our own and it falters and it fails, but we need to consult God and even consult a people of God. Oh, hallelujah. Don't consult everybody. Yeah, don't consult everybody. Consult in people that you genuinely trust. Mm -hmm. He's watch this. The Bible says, if you trust in him and lean not to your own understanding, in all your ways, acknowledge him. What does it say? He will. That's a definite article right there. Amen. He will direct your pathway. He will. And that's what David is saying. God, I put my trust in you. And because I put my trust in you, look at the ladder. You, your unfailing love will keep me. Oh, my God. There it is. Your unfailing love will keep me from stumbling. <laughs> Amen. You're going to make it. Amen. You're, he's, you're unfailing love. Trusting in God. David is saying, God, I trust in you. And for the rest of my life, I did stumble prior to, but, right, but for the rest of my life, I'm putting my whole heart in you. I'm putting my whole trust in you. And your unfailing love is going to keep me from stumbling. It's going to keep me from falling. It's going to keep me from going in the wrong door. It's going to keep me from getting that prestigious pitch, uh, position, even though the money looks good. But sometimes all money is not good money. Oh, my God. Can I get one witness right there? I'm a living witness. I've been there and I've done that. I'm telling you, be okay, Pastor Transparent. Okay, what are you talking about, Pastor Transparent? You look, so I, I've had the wonderful privilege and opportunity to move up in some pretty prestigious positions in the automotive world. I really, really have. And I credit that, all of that to God. I really do. Amen. I, I've went from um, production supervisor all the way up to plant management, quality management. I've been there and I've done that. But I've learned something that as you go high, look, all money is not good money. I've learned something, my brothers and sisters. I've learned to be content therewith. I've learned to be content therewith, my friends. Look, God, God, God would have us to, there, there are many other opportunities and many other ways that God wants to shower you with blessings. Amen. Climbing that corporate ladder, nothing wrong, for, nothing wrong with it for people that desire to do that and you have the, and you have the gift of gab and you are able to talk yourself out of some situation and talk yourself into some situation. But watch this. I've learned something that if you if you do things in and of your own self and you want to move up just because of the status and the position, you're doing it wrong. Do it because you genuinely have a heart to be able to help other people. Right. David's saying your unfailing love, me putting my trust in you is going to keep me from stumbling and going into the wrong doors. 
moving up in the wrong company. Oh my God. Amen. I'm preaching better than you're saying amen this morning. Yeah. Oh God is so worthy. Watch this. I thank God for David this morning saying, God, I thank you for helping me not to stumble any longer. Because, because as you move up and as you move around, you got to make sure that you keep God in the forefront of everything that you do. You got to make sure that, my friends. All right, let's move on. Watch this. Verse, 20, uh, verse 8 says, you will capture all your enemies. Your strong right hand will seize all who hate you. Why in the world, amen, are you worried this morning about all of your haters? <laughs> look, 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 let me call somebody out that I, look, um, look, I'm about to call somebody out this morning. Who can I call out? Uh, one, two, three, Ruth, Ruth Cole. I never met you. I never met you, Ruth, but you connect every morning. So I'm going to use you for an example, right? Why do you worry about people Amen. Uh, that can't do you any harm. Why do you worry about your haters? I'm just saying, I just use your name. You know, you may not have any haters. You may, you may be the sweetest person on earth, Sister Ruth. Amen. But why, why do we get so caught up with people that have no regard for us? Right? Why do we get caught up, Dominique? Can I talk about Dominique and Minister Betty and Sharon? Why do we get caught up uh, with people um, that, 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 that can't do us any harm. All they can do is scream and bark and yell. That's it, right? As long as we are in our spot of obedience, let them do it. No weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. Can I get a witness? Yeah, Minister Lord, yes. Watch this. David says, you will capture all of them. So why are we worried about them? <laughs> why are we worried about people in our lives that, that, that curse us, that, that, uh, that have no regard for us, that are envious, that are jealous, that are, that are devious. Why do we worry about them? When God said, look what David said. David said, God, you're going to capture all. Watch this. Not my enemies, but watch this. Your enemies. This battle is not ours. The battle belongs to who? It belongs to God. Victory belongs to Jesus. And if we have Jesus, guess what? By default, it belongs to us too. Watch this. He said, your strong right hand will seize all who hate you. See, watch this. We are, we are uh, recipients of the kingdom of God. We are heirs and joint heirs to Christ, right? We are, we are firmly in God's hands, right? In Jesus' hands. And Jesus says, uh, no man can pluck Hey Amen. You out of my hand. No man. No man. That's what the word of the Lord says. No man can pluck us out of Jesus' hand. We belong to him. You know the song, I belong to you. Yeah, we belong to him. So don't get caught up with people that don't belong to him. <laughs> Let them do what they do. Let them scream, bark, yell. Let them cuss. Let them do it. Because guess what? They're fighting Ultimately, they are fighting the God in us. And God is the majority, my friend. David is saying this morning, look, all of the Jebusites, Amorites, Amicalites, um, and all of them other ones, guess what? They're going to fall. And God says, your, uh, David is saying, your strong right hand will seize all who hate you. Yeah, that's why I've learned. That's why I've learned. Look, I'm like many times, many instances in my life. That's why I'm just like a lamb before the shearer. And look, I just, God, look, I'm just, I'm just putting my hand in yours. I'm just going to be silent today. I'm not going to say anything. There are times when I want to open up my mouth and ventilate and, and give them back exactly what they gave me. But then God said, no, stand still, son. Stand still, my daughter. Stand still. I've got this. Oh, my God. And I am telling you, when God says he has it, you better believe that he has it. I just stand back and I watch and then and I see so many different things that that oh my god that that happens that I'd be like okay god you said you had it but I didn't know you were gonna ooh, I didn't know you were gonna cut them that deep it is that serious god I've seen I've seen god work in my life and I know that you have too right don't worry about them you the bible says and I've quoted this numerous times in my devotion Fret not, Psalm 37, 
Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be envious of the workers of iniquity as they continue to climb. Because guess what? The higher they go, the Bible says soon they're be going to be cut down and they're going to have a great fall. David is saying your strong right hand will seize all who hate you. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Watch this. Last one I get out your way. So good. So good. He said, you will throw them in a flaming furnace when you appear. The Lord will consume them in his anger. Fire will devour them. Yeah, so I think about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I think about how Nebuchadnezzar wanted them to bow down to this great statue that he created. And they said, no, I will not bow. And I want to tell somebody this morning, don't you dare bow, Aunt Betty. Tony, don't you bow, brother. Deidre, Buki, First Lady uh, Dorsey, right? Uh, don't, don't guys do not bow do not bow down right many times that I've learned something that when you actually bow down before God he will stand up for you bow down only before God don't bow down to your enemies don't bow down to your sickness don't bow down to your financial woes you you bow down in God's presence and he'll enable you to stand up mm, that's good right there amen God says watch this Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not bow down, and because they didn't bow down, they would throw uh, uh, Jesus Christ, uh, this uh, epiphany showed up in the fire. He showed up with them. He showed up in their hot situation, and he cooled down the flames. That's what happens when you do not bow down, because God says, David is saying this morning, he said, I will throw them in a flaming furnace when I appear. Amen. And Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Look, watch this. I want to tell you once again. I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, that God, of course. Oh, hallelujah. He's going to do something in your life grand. He's going to do something in your life that's great. He's going to open up some doors for you. But you've got to believe that he's going to do it. And my question is, do you do you believe that he's going to do it? Hey, man, do you believe that he's going to do it this morning as I get ready to get out of your way? Do you believe that he's going to do it? Do you believe that he's going to help you on your business venture? Do you believe that he's going to help you uh, to go to, uh, and matriculate through your college? Do you believe that he's going to help you? Do you believe that he's going to give you newfound thought process to study better? Do you believe that he's going to undergird you? Do you believe that he's going to open up a door for your children? Do you believe that he's going to get ready to take you higher? Do you believe it? If you believe it and you're putting feet to your faith, why won't he do it? If he did it for David, if you did it for David, who was just like a man, just like me, who was human like all of us, if you did it for David, God, because he loves us and we are his children, he would do it for us. But we got to have faith. We got to have that mustard seed faith. We got to believe big. Utilize the power that's already in you, that mustard seed faith. If you believe God this much, God says, yes, 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 I'm going to open it up for you. I'm going to be with you every step of the way. I'm going to connect the right people with you. I'm going to connect the right business partners with you. I'm going to do it for you. But you got to believe it. Amen. On this beautiful, fantastic Friday, I'm excited because he's going to do it. I am excited for you, Alice. I'm excited for you, Wanda and Barbara. I'm excited for you guys because God will do it. Hallelujah. That's an affirmation for somebody that's this morning that is on the brink of saying, you know what, God, I tried this thing. And I don't, I don't see any results yet. I've learned my personal. I've learned personally to be patient and wait on the Lord. Psalms 40 says, I waited patiently upon the Lord and he inclined unto me and heard my cry and lifted me up. Amen. We're going to get to Psalms 40 um, eventually and you're going to be blessed by it. Father God, we thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity. We thank you, Lord God, for showing us, Lord God, your splendor and your power. We thank you for David uh, continually, Lord God, uh, giving us hope in the midst of our distress, giving us a victory in the midst of our moments where we in war. And we're praying right now that you would go before us on this blessed, fantastic Friday. Whatever comes our way, we're going to stand firm. We're going to look at the situation. We're going to uh, believe by faith that we're going to win. We're going to knock down the walls of Jericho. Lord God, just simply standing still and blowing our horns in Jesus name. We love you now. And we believe by faith that it's already done. And we believe that you're going to do it in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Amen, guys. Look, have a wonderful blessed day. Have a wonderful blessed Saturday. And if it be the Lord's will, we'll connect again at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. Be prepared in Jesus name. Have a wonderful day, guys.